Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. We are now learning the chapter Human Health and Diseases. In the first part, we learned about the common infectious diseases and what are the factors needed for maintaining health. Now, we are going to discuss another infectious disease that is malaria. Malaria is spread by a vector, female anophilus mosquito, and it's caused by a pathogen, plasmodium. We have to learn the life cycle of plasmodium in detail because it has got two hosts. So when we talk about the causative agent or the plasmodium, it is a protozoan and there are different species of plasmodium causing malaria. They are plasmodium vivax, plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium malariae, plasmodium ovale. So, the, though these are the different kinds and malaria is actually a life-threatening disease at least in some part of the world, Plasmodium falciparum is the most dangerous one which can be fatal also. Plasmodium needs two hosts to complete its life cycle. It has got sexual as well as asexual multiplication stages in its life cycle. So the primary host is a female anophilus mosquito in which the sexual stage is happening. Whereas in human beings the asexual stage of the mosquito happens. And the stage of asexual life cycle is called a schizogony that is in human beings. Whereas the sexual stage is called sporogony which is happening in the mosquito gut. Now once it infects a human being there are two parts of our body get affected by this kind of pathogen. The first is our liver cell, second is RBC, red blood corpuscles. The same way within the body of anophilus mosquito it multiplies or develops in two regions. One is the gut of the mosquito, second is the salivary gland of the mosquito. Now let us see in detail first the uh, asexual stage in human beings followed by sexual stage in mosquito. So let us see how this plasmodium is entering the human body and multiplying. So I have given a detailed account of this life cycle with all the necessary terminologies for meat. But in the NCRD only two stages are mentioned, sporozoids and gametocytes that I will explain at the end. So first what happens, a normal human being is actually bitten by a mosquito. That is female anophilus mosquito which is the vector for this disease. Why do we specify female mosquito? Because female mosquitoes only feed on blood meal because they need nutritious blood meal in order to lay mature eggs. Okay. So once this mosquito is biting, it is actually sucking the blood from the human body. But that is it will pierce through the dermal region skin and then pierce through the blood vessel with a proboscis. They have a sharp needle like structure called a proboscis through which it will be siphoning up the blood. But during that time, it actually injects some amount of saliva into the blood. Why? Because when it is taking the blood, the blood should not clot. So it will be injecting an anticoagulant called anophilin in order to stop the blood clot. So once it is injecting that saliva, along with that, what will also go inside certain asexual stages of plasmodium from its salivary gland will go into the bloodstream. That asexual stage is referred to as sporozoid. It looks like this, a spindle shaped structure. So this sporozoid now enters into the bloodstream. So it will pass through the bloodstream and it will finally reach the target organ that is called the liver. So the first target organ in the body of human beings is liver cells. So once it reaches the liver cells, it will now that is entering that infection is happening and it goes inside the hepatic cell. Hepatic means what? Related to liver. So inside the liver cell it grows because it starts getting nutrition and it will uh, change from that spiral shape into an enlarged spherical shape. So that stage is called a schizone stage. Okay? Now this schizone will undergo multiplication. And what kind of multiplication? It is the asexual multiplication and we have learned it is the multiple fission. That means first the nucleus divides into many nuclei and after that each nucleus 
as you uh, accumulate certain amount of cytoplasm around it and forming large number of ospects. The schizon now multiplies and now the stage is called a cryptozoids. Now the cryptozoids will accumulate nutrition and they grow then it is called a cryptomerozoids. So they are filling one liver cell, they are multiplying to a large number. Now what happens? Uh, so because of the large number the liver cell bursts. Once the liver cells burst the stage which is coming out is called a cryptomerozoids which will enter into neighboring liver cells. So this infection will continue and then those liver cells also these merozoids multiply and finally all of them get ruptured and the merozoids or now we can call it as metacryptomerozoids or simply merozoids they come into the bloodstream. Now in the bloodstream what is its the target organ? RBC or the red blood corpuscles. So this RBC is getting infected, infectious stage and then it will enlarge inside the RBC. So before that all the stages starting from the infection it is entering the liver and multiplying these stages schizon to cryptozoids, cryptomerozoids and then metacryptozoids that stage is called a pre-exoerythrocytic schizogony. That means erythro means what? RBC. Pre-erythrocytic means it is before erythrocytic and exoerythrocytes outside the RBC. So that's why this stage is called a pre-exoerythrocytic schizogony. Now it has entered the RBC, infected the RBC. This stage is called a erythrocytic schizogony. Means it is a within the erythrocyte or the red blood cell. There also first what happens? The merozoite will enlarge. They are growing, they are getting nutrition. So they are growing. That stage is called a trophozoite. So this blue color is the trophozoite. Around that you will see the RBC, um, the cytoplasm of the RBC. Then it enters into the next stage. That is called a signet ring stage. The signet ring stage is just like a, a ring, a ring form. That is central, there is a vacuum. Okay, so this signet ring stage will form. From the signet ring stage, it will enter into another stage called a amoeboid stage where the outline will become irregular and it is a large structure. Then this will go into another structure uh, that is a, again a round structure but along with that some dots will appear that is called a Schaffner's dots or Schaffner's granules. These are visible under microscope. These are all actually uh, clear cut evidence for which type of this plasmodium has infected the patient. For example, plasmodium vivax and ovale and all we will see this Schaffner's dot. Or even how many times they are multiplying inside each cell that also gives an account of which species has infected the patient. Now from Schaffner's dots appear that will be visible under the microscope. From then uh, it becomes arranged in a flower like manner then it is called a rosetting stage. Now it is time for the bursting the RBC. Meanwhile, it will rupture or it will degrade the hemoglobin of the RBC and it produces a chemical called a hemozoin. So, once it is rupturing, this hemozoin will be liberated out. That hemozoin causes the characteristic symptoms of this disease. That is high fever, chill. These two are occurring because of the hemozoin. That will persist for some time and then subsides. Till next RBCs are rupturing. Okay. So now what happens? The whatever came out, they will infect other RBCs. They undergo all these stages inside, multiply, finally rupture and come out. Then second rec uh, recurrence of this symptoms will occur. So that's a periodic occurrence of fever and chill are the symptoms of malaria. Now after a particular amount of multiplication, then they will undergo morphological change or they will gradually change into two different types of gametes. That is called a microgamete and a macrogamete. Microgametes are the male and macrogametes are female gametes. So up to this stage happens inside the human body and that is called a rhizogony or the asexual stage. So though here gametocytes are forming, these are called a gametocytes. So though gametocytes are forming, here they are not undergoing fertilization or sexual reproduction is not happening. Okay, but in your textbook only this entry name that is the stage in which the microbe enters the body that is porozoid. 
Then after multiplying, they come out of the liver, they infect the RBC, they rupture and produce hemozoin and then they later turn into gametocytes male and female. Only these ter terminologies are used in NCRT textbook. So I just go through once again. First, when a mosquito bites, along with its saliva, sporozoids enter into human blood. Through the blood, it reaches the first target organ, liver. Inside the liver, it grows to form the schizome. Schizome multiplies to form cryptozoids. Cryptozoids enlarge to form cryptomerozoids. They rupture hepatic cells and infect further hepatic cells and this process continues. Then metacryptomerozoids are released out of liver cells or generally we can say cryptozoids or merozoids. They come and attack RBC. Inside the RBC, they grow into a large structure called a trophozoid. Then the trophozoid will undergo morphological change to become signet ring stage. Then it will become amoeboid stage and then it starts producing certain dots called Schaffner's dots and then it will arrange in a floral structure that is called a rosetti stage. Rosetti stage ruptures releasing the plasmodium and also the hemozoin causing the symptom of uh, malaria that is fever and chill. Along with that the cells will transform into two gametocytes the micro gametocyte or the female gamete and the macro gametocyte or the female gamete but they remain in the blood till another mosquito comes and bites because fertilization cannot happen in the human host. Now another mosquito will when coming and biting and sucking the blood it will take this macro and micro gametocytes along with its blood meal. It will go to its gut or the stomach where this micro and macro gametes fuse. Once they fuse, that is called a fertilization. We know fertilization gives rise to zygote. Fertilization gives rise to zygote. Now, uh, the zygote formed will turn into another structure called a ookinate. Then the ookinate will be coming out of the gut wall, piercing the gut wall, it comes out of it to the bloodstream where this ookinate will now turn into another structure called a oocyte. Another structure called a oocyst. Cyst means with a thick wall covering. Inside the oocyst it will again multiply to form many sporozoids and the sporozoids stay in the saliva of the mosquito, in the salivary gland. Then when this mosquito now injects its saliva into another person, the sporozoids enter into the blood and the whole cycle will start again. So once again, the micro and macro gametes are taken in by a mosquito which is biting this infected person and these gametocytes reach the gut of that mosquito where it undergoes fertilization to produce zygote. Now zygote will transform into a structure called a ookinate. Ookinate comes out of the gut wall to the body cavity and it forms a structure called a oocyst. The oocyst will now go to the salivary gland. Oocyst which is actually coming to the salivary gland, they multiply there and form many sporozoids and they remain in the saliva. So when this mosquito is biting another human being, the whole cycle will start again. The stage which is happening in the mosquito body is the sexual stage and it is called a sporogony, whereas in human being it is called a schizogony. Hope this video was useful to you all. If so, please like, share and subscribe to my channel, Biology My Passion.